there are many applications out there which use these options like sign in with Google, sign in with Facebook and so on and so forth. And you must have also seen these options where you are asked permission. For example, in this page, the application is asking permission to access the user's Google Drive. If you've seen any of these options, behind the scenes, these applications are using OAuth 2 and OpenID Connect. So let's see how these work with an example. So let's say you're working on a social media app like Facebook and in the app, you're just showing a list of friends for this particular user. You want to have an option where the user can add more friends on the social media platform by importing the contacts from Google. So essentially, we want the server to get the permission from the user to access the user's Google contacts. But of course, if you go to Google contacts asking for the contacts for this particular user, it is not going to give you those contacts because you do not have the access to them. And you cannot use the Google ID and password for that particular user. Ideally, we would want a temporary grant given by the user to us such that we can use that grant and ask Google contacts for the contacts of this particular user temporarily. So we want the user to log into Google, get a particular grant, share that grant with us on the server side and then the server can use that temporary grant, go to Google contacts, ask for the contacts for that particular user. And if the grant is valid, then the server will be granted the right contacts. And this mechanism of giving this temporary grant and using the grant to access the resource on behalf of a user is nothing but the OAuth 2.0 flow. So OAuth 2.0 is a protocol or a mechanism to provide an application or a server temporary access to a resource. It is sometimes also known as a delegation or an authorization protocol. So in this case, of course, the user already has access to Google contacts and it is delegating that access to the server. You can also think of it as the user is authorizing server to access contacts on his behalf. And that is why it is called a delegation or an authorization protocol. Sometimes it is also called as an authentication protocol, but that is incorrect. You can use OAuth 2 for authentication, but we'll talk about that in the latter part of the video. Now let's see how the OAuth 2.0 mechanism works. So what we want to do is we want to have a URL on the button such that when the user clicks that button, the user is redirected to this particular URL. This URL is the OAuth URL for Google. You will have similar URLs for Facebook, Twitter and any of the other OAuth providers. With the URL, you'll need to pass a few parameters. The first parameter is the request scope. In this case, the value is contacts which means you're asking permission to access users contacts. It could also be Google Drive, YouTube videos and so on and so forth. The second parameter is the response type, which is code, which is nothing but the temporary grant, which we saw a couple of slides earlier. The third is the callback URL, which is the redirect URL. So once the user does the actual login and gives the permission, that will be the URL, which is called by Google to come back to our application and proceed with our logic. And the last parameter is the client ID, which is the permanent ID you get when you register yourself to access the Google's OAuth servers. So once you call this URL with these parameters, the user is redirected to a login page. If the user is already signed in, for example, here I'm already signed in. So I'm asked to choose any of my accounts. Once an account is chosen, the user will be taken to the consent page where it will say this application wants to access your Google account. More specifically, it wants to see, edit, download and delete your contacts. And only if you trust that application that it will do the right thing, the user will press allow. So once the user clicks on allow, the callback URL which we sent as part of the parameters, Google will redirect to that callback URL and it will add a temporary grant which we spoke about as part of that URL. Once the UI has that code, of course, it can then share it with the server and the server can use that to access Google contacts. But there is a risk involved here because the code is already part of the callback URL, which is on the UI, which is not very secure. So it is very 
easy for that code to be misused. So there is one more step involved. The server has to connect the OAuth server and it has to exchange that code for the real access token. So this code by itself will not get us access to Google contacts. We have to send this code back to the Google OAuth server and then only if the code is correct and there are a couple of other parameters, if they are correct, only then Google OAuth server will give us the valid access token. And once we have the valid access token, we can then use the Google contacts URL and get the access to the user contacts. Once and this is the whole flow for OAuth 2.0. So the flow that we spoke about is called as a web server flow, but there are also other flows based on what kind of device you are running your UI on. And that brings us to OpenID Connect. So during the OAuth flow, the user has already selected a particular account or the user has already signed in to a particular account. The question is, can we use this process to get the user authenticated for our own application? So in that case, we will have to tweak the flow a little bit. So now instead of invite friends page, it is the first login page. We'll give the button of sign in with Google. We'll use the same flow as before, the same OAuth server, the same temporary code. But once we receive the code on the server side, instead of using that code to get some access token to access Google contacts, instead we will get the user profile. So we'll get the user's profile. And this flow, which is built on top of OAuth 2, is called OpenID Connect flow. So OpenID Connect is a thin layer built on top of OAuth 2, which provides us the ability to log in using that OAuth provider. So the flow for OpenID Connect is also very similar. So just like before, we'll have the OAuth URL, we'll pass in a few parameters, but this time, instead of having the request scope as contacts, we will change it to OpenID profile or OpenID email or both OpenID profile and email. This tells the OAuth server that what we are looking for is not access to contacts, but access to users profile and the email so that we can use it as login in our own custom application. The rest of the flow remains the same. Once the user logs in, it is redirected back to the UI with a temporary code. The UI can share that code with the server and the server can exchange that code to get access to the user's profile. Technically, you're not just getting user profile. What you're getting is an access token and a special ID token. And this ID token has all the details of a user's profile. And this ID token is also known as the JSON web token or JWT in short. This is a cryptographically signed token, which contains parameters used to know which user has logged in. So in our case, we will only use the email as the user ID using which the user has logged in and then proceed and proceed with the next parts of the application. So that's the basic flow of OAuth 2.0 which is used for authorizing a server or an application to access some resource and open ID connect flow, which allows us to use signing in with a particular OAuth provider instead of using our own custom sign in mechanism. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.